Hey ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be part one to what if Naruto had Kamui. So make sure to like and subscribe. Come on, you gotta be nice. Pretty much just gonna say this every video now until you do. But anyway, with that being said, let's just jump right into the actual backstory of this what if. Like how is exa how exactly is it gonna happen? Like it's a little bit weird for him to just have Kamui. So what I'm going to actually end up doing is kind of lazy, I'm not gonna lie. Just because of the fact that I wanna like just get this over with and not really have to worry about it that much. Or at least not with like the backstory of it, like because that's not really actually important to the story. I can do what I want. I'm like I'm a what if writer, but like the main focus isn't like the backstory of how Naruto but you get the point. So I'm not gonna come up with some like elaborate backstory to how Naruto can like you know, he has it. He's just born as like some sort of weird mutant Uchiha, whatever, and he, you know, has Kamui. He, now, Naruto isn't just gonna, like, automatically have it, like, he's not gonna enter the academy with his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and just ch be chilling there. No, he's gonna have to go through the normal stages of Sharingan, but he still will awaken Mangekyo at a really young age, just because of how Naruto's childhood was, especially once he awakens the Sharingan because of how hated the Uchiha actually are. So, that being said, Naruto's birth goes exactly the same. Naruto hasn't awakened any kind of Sharingan or Kamui or anything like that yet, so nothing of that changes. And Naruto one day, when I think he was around the age of eight, actually ends up entering the academy. At this point, nothing strange has actually happened yet, and the beatings are relatively mild. Like, Naruto doesn't get, like, hurt that much from them. Like, he feels them, but it's not enough to, like, make him have some, like, spur make mental breakdown moment. So, with this actually happening, this would be the day that... He, not curious and what the heck am I talking about, that Donzo would reveal to the village that Naruto is the Ninetales Jinchuriki. This is the day that was actually Naruto's birthday. He just turned eight years old, and now he gets a great birthday present. All of the villagers are going to try to kill him now. So Naruto runs around the village and through the forest, and he's trying to avoid all of the villagers as, for as long as possible, but they've been chasing him for hours at this point. And there are hundreds of them that keep taking turns chasing Naruto, taking a break. But Naruto doesn't get that break, so eventually, he would tire out. The villagers end up catching up to him, and they gang up on Naruto. They start beating him, they punch him. But something interesting happens. Halfway through, Naruto is beaten to a pulp at this point. They're just kicking him, he's on the floor, but suddenly they all sense something. Something strange. It, like, it makes them want to back up a little bit because of like they, they sense danger. And when Naruto stands up from all of the bruised beating, he, he can barely move at this point, but he stands up lifting his head up with his one Tomo Sharingan showing. The stress and like level of this moment made it so that Naruto could awaken it at such an early age. So all the villagers would run away at this point because this is like a big surprise to them. They were they really weren't expecting that, but obviously they would come back. Every once in a while, Naruto would get chased by the villagers, and each time Naruto would gain more and more strength, eventually getting to the point where he has complete mastery over his Sharingan, or at least, you know, the three tomo version of it he did, like not actual master you get the point you get the point he has the like fully evolved normal base sharingan at this point but something happens when something happens one day naruto isn't just attacked by villagers this time the, all of these villagers are joined by many chunin genin and even a few jonin members just to torture Naruto that little bit further, and maybe, just maybe, they'll actually kill him this time. They haven't really decided yet, but we'll see. It depends on their mood by the end of it. So they, you know, start beating down on Naruto. Naruto is strong. He'd probably be able to take them all on if none of the Jonin had showed up, but that's not what happened. The Jonin did show up, and they are absolutely wailing on Naruto at this point. He's getting completely decimated by all of these different people, all at the same time, all different directions. They begin actually, like, going for the kill now. They're starting to throw kunai at Naruto's vital points, and it is beginning to actually hit those spots. 
One kunai gets sunk, gets just digs into Naruto's lungs, with another going into his liver. Naruto falls to the ground at this point, coughing up blood as he can see little oxygen bubbles and you know in it, indicating that you know he's probably about to fucking die because his lungs are bleeding. Naruto is like, well, fuck, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is not gonna go that well. And Naruto looks up at this point as he sees just a massive sword getting swung down on him, but suddenly it slows to almost a stop. And Naruto, Naruto Sharingan evolves into the Mangekyo. Now, you might be thinking, oh, Naruto will just dodge, but Naruto doesn't. For some reason, Naruto has understanding, or like people in general, like we've seen this with like people first unlocking like their Mangekyo Sharingan, so I have like an understanding of what their ability does and kind of how to use it, like how we saw it with Obito when he first awakened it. So with Naruto awakening his Mangekyo at this point, the sword phases straight through him. They all think they just chopped Naruto clean in half, but he's revealed to be completely fine. With this actually happening, Something interesting happens here. Because of all of the emotions just absolutely t tormenting through Naruto at this point, he just awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan, which induces rage and anger and all of that. He has been beaten to the point of like being almost dead, and he is completely enraged at the villagers right now for what they're doing to him. This awakens a little bit like it sends out some of like the QB chakra as Naruto's entire body begins healing as some of the you know chakra swirls around him it soon dissipates as Naruto is fully healed and he looks up his eyes now swirling in the pattern of a Mangekyo Sharingan all of the vi villagers immediately retreat same with most of the Genin and Chunin the only ones remaining are a few Jonin and Chunin members they're like, oh, whatever, just because just because he's a little bit stronger now doesn't mean we're not going to be able to take him on. We're still much higher ranked than him, so we shouldn't really have any trouble with this. So they all charge at Naruto, and Naruto just simply sits there. All of the attacks just seemingly passing through him, with the QB chakra just getting more and more built up as the time goes on. Naruto is just absolutely, like, enraged at this point. He is on the verge of losing control, but he's trying not to completely lose it. At the same time, he is almost out of, like, stamina because he's not used to using, like, the Mangekyo at all, along with the fact that he's been using, like, QB Chakra, he's been stabbed, he's been this, he's been that, so he's a little bit, like, battle-worn at this point because he's not used to using any of the things that he's doing right now. So, Naruto absolutely decimates them. Their attacks completely phasing through Naruto, and then Naruto kicks them. Naruto sends them flying up into the air as they slam back down completely unconscious, with Naruto slightly, you know, a little, just a little bit after, his eyes once again swirling as they revert back to Naruto's normal, you know, blue eyes, and Naruto falls down to the ground unconscious, just completely exhausted from what he just did. Now. Naruto wakes up a few hours to a day later, and he is somewhere where he does not recognize, and he can tell immediately that it is not a hospital. So, some of those Chunin and like Jonin members that ended up running away ended up reporting to Hiruzen what actually happened. And with them, you know, altering the what actually, you know, what actually went down because they don't want to be like oh yes yeah, so we were hunting this kid down in the forest and he kind of killed all of us like they, they're not gonna say that they're gonna say that naruto is somehow in uchiha and he can use the nine tails chakra and he just killed a bunch of joni and chunin and genin members this is how it is portrayed to hiruzen so when he gets there naruto is completely unconscious with a bunch of unconscious bodies and dead bodies around him he has no reason but to like kind of believe what that guy told him with no reason to believe otherwise because you know he he wasn't really taking care of naruto he doesn't know what naruto does and he doesn't really know his personality that well just because he never spends time with him so eh, whatever so with this actually you know 
being a thing and happening, Naruto would wake up in this jail cell. He looks around and Hiruzen is sitting across from him. Naruto is completely healed at this point because of the QB chakra kind of like going through him a little bit. And Naruto gets up out of the bed and he has full memory of what happens. And he tries to explain this to Hiruzen, but he is just not believing him. He doesn't even care. He's just wondering why Naruto would do this. He doesn't really care that, you know, he might not have. Hiruzen doesn't delve into this further and just assumes that, yes, yes indeed, Naruto had to have killed all of those people just in cold blood because he wanted to do it. And so, instead of, you know, like, exiling Naruto or doing anything like that, he immediately wants to send Naruto and give him the death penalty. And Naruto is completely shocked by this. Just a few hours ago, he had been sitting in a jail cell, and now he is looking up at a bunch of ninja looking around at this, like, he's pretty much in, like, this a massive circle of villagers and people. It's pretty much like a public execution at this point. And everybody is just smiling at this. They're throwing shit at Naruto. They're like, yeah, you needed to die, you stupid fucking demon brat. And, you know, all of these things are being shouted at Naruto, and Naruto is completely crying at this point. But he's not crying out of sadness. He is crying out of madness. He is about to completely lose it. Now, all of the ninja around him are seeing this, and they realize that now would probably be a good time to kill him before he tries to do anything. But, as they try to kill him, the attacks phase straight through Naruto. Naruto, now, you know, realizing that he can get this, himself out of this situation, simply breaks out of the shackles that he's on, continuing to phase through attacks as he walks down and across. He plans on giving a little bit of a goodbye gift before he comes back in a few years to completely eradicate them. He wants to do something a little bit fun. So Naruto stands up and he walks to the top of like a massive podium so he can begin giving a speech. As Naruto is walking up there, many jutsus, kunai, swords, all these different things are being thrown, swung through, or like launched at Naruto, but all of them are just going right through him with his QB chakra also healing his eyes, so he will never go blind from it unless, like, he uses it while Kurama is out of chakra, obviously. So, Naruto gets up to the top of this, and he's deciding whether or not he wants to give a speech or just leave some kind of goodbye present, making, you know, that might send a few, like, more messages than words actually could. And he decides to do that. Naruto, with both of his Mangekyo, remember this, he could have potential not only to awaken the Sharingan, but he has both versions of Kamui, the sucking, like the far away sucking and the close range or like self done sucking. Is that weird? That sounds very weird. I don't care. That's fine. It doesn't matter to me. Anyway, <laughs> so with having both of these two different abilities, Along with having, we'll say, like, the skeletal Susano at this point, just because Naruto's been fighting with his, you know, Mangekyo quite a bit at this point, he activates the ribcage Susano and jumps down from the top of the podium, slamming into the ground, making a massive dust cloud that comes up around him as everybody is completely blinded. And when they once again, like, are able to see, the ones that are farther away from Naruto see something absolutely terrifying. Everybody within like a 20 meter range of Naruto, the second he landed, immediately died, getting crushed by the Susano's hands. Now, Naruto completely eradicates anybody who even tries to oppose him. He doesn't want to like, like just completely exterminate the village yet because they could be a little bit more fun for him later. So after, you know, making sure he's thoroughly sent his message across to everybody there, he decides to retreat. He uses Kamui and goes into his own personal dimension, leaving for the time being. However, that is where I will be leaving this part off. Stop back in for probably part two of the final, whatever, we'll see.